you work very hard to have a home and having consistent sewage problems, it really impacts my quality of life and oddly my sense of self-worth. Homeowners in Mount Vernon are now demanding action claiming the town's aging sewer system is falling apart. It's a 100 year old system. So over the years, you know, with a lot of wear and tear and increase in the population, it's at its breaking point. A stretch of homes in Mount Vernon getting flooded by the nasty mess that's bubbling up from the ground. Residents worried about their health and desperately begging for a fix. The fact that Mount Vernon is a predominantly black town and the median income level is so much lower than the rest of Westchester, that's not a coincidence. So this is the basement. It had been a plan or a goal to finish this um, at one point. Um, and then we discovered these sewage problems. So happy Sunday. This is what the basement looks like. That bubbling there is water coming up out of the sewer. You can't see it in here now, but um, these sinks will fill with sludge. You'll see feces in it. It's just gross. Actually, you can still see a little bit here that I didn't get. This is sewage. This I clean very well. This I'm just noticing. Ew. When sewage has been backing up, I have to say, don't do laundry, don't run the dishwasher, don't take a shower. So having to adjust our lives to this problem is really, you know, everybody's flexible. Everybody's trying to, you know, be a team member, but it's really, it's hard to ask people not to flush the toilet. There's been times where it hasn't been bad and there's been times where it's really bad, like right now, and we've had a ton of issues this year. Like how many times would you say you've had the plumber here? Five times this year? Probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. People come from around the world to see New York City and to go to Times Square. But little do they know that within 20 minutes of New York, they'll see homes there they have raw sewage running back into their basements. That was a shock to me. So in terms of the scale of this and how, uh, how prevalent it is in this country, we're just starting to find out. That's why we call it America's Dirty Secret. This is pretty much the damage. I think that it's been such a persistent problem for a variety of reasons. I have heard that there are sewage problems in the infrastructure of Mount Vernon. My name is Damani Bush, I'm from the city of Mount Vernon, and I'm the DPW Commissioner. So right now we're heading to Lincoln Avenue in Howard Street, where we actually had one of our sanitary lines collapse. The entire street was undermined, and um, we had businesses and residents in the area who were experiencing sewer backups into their homes. So a few months ago, this would actually overflow with raw sewage from all the homes coming from this way and this area. It would stop right here and literally just start overflowing directly out the manhole and running onto the street and running in whatever way it could. This is a typical problem throughout the city of Mount Vernon because, like I said, the system is over 100 years old. It's virtual clay pipe. And over the years, you know, with the wear and tear of it and the increased population, it just collapses and it breaks down. It's a big problem that we're having, but we are addressing it. You know, it's kind of hard because it's like playing whack-a-mole, you know, where we're fixing one problem and then another problem pops up. We're doing the best we can with what we have, as we only have five guys on our sewer crew, and we're responsible for 100 miles of sewers throughout the city. So that alone is, is difficult. So the sewer infrastructure is in the state that it's in, in Mount Vernon, it's two reasons. The number one reason is peer neglect. There was just this lack of reinvestment into proper equipment, personnel, manpower, to actually maintain the system. And now the volcano has erupted and everything is just breaking all at once. And the second problem is, of course, funding. Today, Mayor Sean Patterson Howard welcomed the vice chair of the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council to view the situation firsthand, Catherine Coleman Flowers. I have spoken with the mayor of Mount Vernon, residents of Mount Vernon, representatives from Mount Vernon on the state and local level, and it's very clear, without federal intervention and federal help, they will not be able to fix the problem. 
that's indicative of these issues across the nation where years and years of kicking the can down the road has led us to crisis. These, these repair jobs are not simple because it's hard to determine exactly what's going on beneath the streets. Like for instance, we did a project on South Third Avenue and Sanford Boulevard. And at first it seemed like a simple undermine where it was about an eight by eight foot patch. But what happened was when we actually started excavating and the entire street was collapsed. And the only thing that was holding the street up was two concrete slabs that were joined together. So beneath those two concrete slabs, everything was washed out, it was hollow. It was one of our main streets in the city where our second largest school is located. So at any given moment, a school bus could have been driving over and the street would have just literally collapsed. So for instance, that simple thing where we thought it could have cost us maybe $20,000 for you know a two day, three day job, it ended up costing us $500,000. And this is just one street. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers, with sanitation, the U.S. is given a D plus. That's not good. Then we have another factor, which is mother nature. Whenever there's any rainfall, even though we have a separate storm system from our sanitary lines, it just starts to back up going back into the actual city. So right now, you know, we, we're gonna have definitely our guys working tonight. As we get these deluges of rain due to climate change, it makes the problem more extreme. The system has been failing for many years and the residents, they've been suffering for years now. This was my office. Um, I've repurposed it because I didn't want my computers and equipment down here anymore. Family pictures, pictures of my four kids and important papers and um, other, you know, cards and things like that. And um, yeah, those boxes got just decimated. It's very difficult. I mean, I'm still dealing with this stuff and a lot of things are just going to go in the garbage at this point, but I'm trying to preserve those things that can't be replaced like pictures from before the digital times. The emotional toll that I've noticed it take on my mom is she's a single mom. She works full time. She has four kids and she's expected to deal with this. Like to equate it, it feels like a, like a third or fourth job that she has. It's pretty demoralizing in some ways, especially because we don't really have the financial wherewithal to deal with it on a persistent basis. And it's really taxing in that way. Dealing with this on a regular basis, it's depressing and it brings on this feeling of helplessness. I have spoken to the city about the problem. I just had someone come in last week from the sewage department and again say, this is on your side, this is not our problem. That is hard to believe because so many people in Mount Vernon are having this problem. Maybe this is going a little off topic, but I don't feel like if this were, you know, one mile away from here, it would be brushed off in the same way as, um, as it is in Mount Vernon, which is a town with a majority black population. The people that bear the brunt of infrastructure problems in the United States are generally people of color and poor people. Why? Because they're people of color and poor people. I've seen this in rural communities. I've seen this in poor communities. But now I'm seeing it among people that are middle class. But the one thing they have in common is that they're marginalized and they're generally people of color. The mayor hopes to convince federal and state officials to provide not only manpower, but also financing for a comprehensive overhaul of a system plagued with problems. A repair job that could easily cost more than the city's annual $122 million budget. Right now, the ideal solution is to bring in the experts put together a comprehensive plan for the overall system. Once we have that in place and we have the reporting and the data to back it up, then we can go to our partners in the state and our federal partners and say, look, we need this amount of money to help us fix this problem because we just can't do it in-house. This is millions and millions of dollars that the city just doesn't have. So we're gonna need that additional funding on the federal level to help us fix the problems. Federal funding from President Biden's newly signed infrastructure deal could make a big impact here in the Hudson Valley. City leaders in Mount Vernon are hoping they'll get their fair share of funding. In the case of Mount Vernon, I hope 
that they are one of the places that selected to get funding to deal with this infrastructure problem because without dealing with it, I think we are creating a, a potential pu public health crisis that we can prevent. The U.S. is actually the wealthiest country in the world and this should not happen here. I would like a permanent solution. I would like sewage not to be part of my daily fear factor.